Hi, I'm Mark Verstegen, and welcome to Sports School and the Running Training Program. This is the second part of the three-part series. And the great thing about Video On Demand is you can either go back to part one or ahead to part three if you need to. Running Training 2 is going to focus on injury reduction strategies, or what we call prehabilitation, or prehab for short. This is going to look at the greatest demands of running, how your feet hit the ground, those arches, the ankles, how your knees absorb the stress in your hips, all in your low back, and develop a very simple strategy for you to protect your body so you can enjoy the running more often. One of the keys to effective training for runners is staying healthy. The way to achieve this is through improving your pillar strength, essentially developing the muscles that will give you a powerful stride and that also help you endure those long miles. This program will increase your strength and improve your balance, both keys in finding that added speed. And don't forget that here in Sports School, you can use your remote to stop, pause, rewind, or fast forward any of the training techniques that we're demonstrating. This means you are in total control. You can learn at your own pace. We're gonna start running training two with our world-class athlete, Jesse Stenson. Jesse, great to have you. Thanks, Mark. We're gonna focus this episode on injury reduction, or what we call prehabilitation, or prehab for short, and the second half will focus more on strength. Jesse, if I say prehab and strength, what do those things mean to the endurance world? You know, Mark, when I started this program, I definitely had some injuries to overcome. So I started with some rehab and some of the basics of the program. Yep. And now that I've overcome my injuries, I'm injury free. I incorporate prehab, which we're going to talk about now, which allows me to be in control, keep my body strong, injury resistant, which I love, and then really make the most of my strength routines. Excellent. What well, Jesse stayed in sports school, we love to be proactive. It's great to be injury free, we always knock on wood, mm. but it's also something that we can help control if we do the right things. So let's go ahead and get right into our right. injury reduction or our prehab routine. Jess, we're gonna start off with a quadruped rocking. Now this one may look really simple. Jess is just gonna go down on all fours here. And what this is gonna do is gonna be help to mobilize this hip capsule. If these get locked down, the rest of your body has to compensate every stride. So Jessie's gonna do is she's not going to come all the way up in an arch this way. And she's not gonna go all the way down this way, but what she will do is just find that happy medium in between, keep the tummy tight, and we're just gonna try to hold this angle right here. So that's where I want you to focus, and just rock the hips back. Now our goal here is to try to keep this just like it is. You may feel that nice blocking right to the front, and that's helping to mobilize this hip joint right here as your thigh goes in there. And then she'll just come right back up, and we'll rock right back again. Again, really important to hold this angle. You don't want to see is everything real rock or tilt back, not what we want to have happen. So on all these exercises that we have in our prehab routine, we're going to do one to two sets of five to 10 repetitions. So Jesse, that's a good three right there. Excellent. Now always with video on demand, you can pause it, you can get a few more reps in or just practice that. But again, one to two sets, five to 10 repetitions. Do you feel that in your hips? Absolutely, I start every run session with that exercise right there. And the main thing is we want to make sure that the vehicle's ready to go out and hit the pavement. Now the next thing we're gonna do is really open up that ankle joint again and stretch a calf. So we have a lot of problems with the arch or right in through to the knee. Shin splints are another one that tends to bite people if we don't have the right type of mobility and stability down there. So Jesse, let's go ahead and get in the split position. And we're gonna go through our closed chain what we call dorsiflexion, or simply just rocking the knee over the toe. So Jessie's gonna have nice posture here. You'll notice she has the foot flat on the ground, and she's gonna push that knee forward as long as she can keep that heel down. Then she'll come right back, and then she'll bring that knee up, and then we'll just go ahead and push it right forward again, pulling that toe right up toward the shin. Good, you're gonna feel the stretch right in through here. Do you feel that, Jessie? Yeah, it's great. Good, and rock back. Now we're gonna do this again for one to two sets of five to 10 repetitions. Good, you can go ahead and switch legs, pull that toe up, exhale, and then rock back. Now the real important part here is to make sure that we keep that arch. I don't want your foot to be flat. We wanna make sure you hold a nice little arch in that foot, and that will help your ankle, your knee, and your hip joint make you a more efficient runner. You feeling that, Jess? I do, and uh, yeah, feels great. Excellent. Now Jessie does a great job, is when she rocks forward is to keep that knee right over her middle toe I don't want you to cave in or to roll out to compensate for lack of movement. So only as long as you keep that knee forward, then we'll be set. These are two critical elements to your prehab routine. 
One of the main things in running is how we take care of this hip, because the hip actually links our feet up to our arms. Now we talked about in training one of how this hip is really important, how it stabilizes in and out. So we're gonna focus a couple exercises to kick on the muscle on the outside, just above the hip joint, and then also focus on the inside of the leg. If we do that, you'll better stabilize, improve your efficiency, making your little runs a lot more enjoyable. Jess, let's go ahead and start down. We're gonna be in a quadruped or RL4. Now when Jessie does this, she's gonna make sure that we're nice and flat to the back, tummy's gonna be tight, and Jessie's gonna go through and we're gonna work the muscle just above her hip joint. Jessie's gonna keep the leg bent, make sure this back stays flat, and fire the muscle just above that hip joint. Again, one to two sets of five to 10 repetitions. Good. And then back down. Now, Jessie does a great job of really holding that back flat as she goes through. If you start to compensate by rotating here, that's what's happening during your running. That's where you're gonna have a little bit more injury potential above and below your hip. So again, just a few more. Good, and you're really gonna feel that right out here. Small movement, but really important. The added benefit is the hip stability of this leg that's staying down. You feel those places, Jess? I feel all those places. I really focus on keeping, keeping really long, keeping that back flat, and firing that glute right back there. It's a great point. Even though we're on all fours, I wanna make sure this posture always is that foundation for great movement. Okay, Jess, let's go ahead and go right on your side next. Now this next exercise, we call sideline hip a deduction or adduction. So Jessie's gonna start off lying on her side. She's gonna bring the top leg up. The toe is gonna be right up toward the shin so that we have one nice long lever. Again, one to two sets of five to 10 repetitions here will be great. Jessie's gonna make sure to keep her tummy tight. This leg's gonna be straight. She's gonna fire the muscle on the inside of the down leg. You ready, Jess? Ready. Let's go ahead and crank away for five reps here, good. Now, Jess, this isn't a very big movement, but this isn't that easy, is it? No, and it's definitely working that inside thigh. <laughs> this is one of the things where this muscle, if the outside muscles get real tight, which they do from running, this one's gonna have a hard time firing, but once you get it, it's really gonna help loosen up those hip muscles as well as stabilize them. So this is the sideline hip adduction. Really important to help stabilize that hip to make the next run better than the last one. One of the most important things when we run is to understand that our body transfers force from this shoulder across your body to the opposite hip. So we really need to make sure that we can help stabilize our body that way to improve your running times and also make sure you can withstand the demands of running. So Jesse, let's go ahead and start off with a high tech name of dead bug, <laughs> all right? Jesse's gonna hop right down on the ground. Now the key point here is that she's gonna keep the tummy tight so you should feel like your back is flat against the pad. She's gonna take her hands and make sure that the tummy stays nice and tight through there. If at any time your tummy feels like it sticks up to the ceiling, stop, rest until you can hold it back in. Jess, you'll then take the knees right up toward her shins, doing a great job of the toes staying up, and we're gonna try this for one to two sets of five to 10 repetitions. Jessie's gonna start there and just gradually drop her heel down. Notice the tummy stays in and comes right back up and then drops her right down. Now this may look very simple, but wait till you try this without any movement occurring above the waist. Good, Jesse. Now we're gonna show you the next progression. As that becomes easier, Jesse can now add her arms in. So she's gonna reach her arm up as the leg drops. And we're gonna again go in this X fashion, left leg to right arm, and then switch. And again, the hand is staying right here on her tummy so that she can actually make sure that that's firing properly. And that's gonna help you with that running action as we go through, better stability, more efficiency, you'll enjoy your run better. Excellent job, Jesse, you feel All that? All right, yeah, it's a small exercise, but making sure my hands stay here, it helps me keep, keep me in focus. Really helps get in your mind and your muscle. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over into a diagonal arm lift. So just let's go ahead and put your head up at this hand. And what we're gonna do now is get right into this position. Now what this is gonna give you again is focus on this core, but Jessie's now gonna add in the rotary stability. She's gonna push her chest away from the ground to make sure her shoulders are nice and flat. I'm gonna go one to two sets of five to 10 repetitions. The key thing, straight line from her ear right down to her knee. I don't want the glutes too far up or too far down like an old horse. Nice and tight. Now Jessie's gonna reach through that arm. Should see no movement to the rest of this body. Excellent job, and back down and then no movement. 
Good. Now this is a challenge. What you're gonna feel is the tension from that right shoulder to the left hip. Excellent. Now this one is where I really have to focus myself. Jesse, are you focusing? Absolutely, it's a tough one, but uh, it's great. Excellent. Jesse doesn't have the luxury of hitting pause and focusing on this because she has <laughs> me right here. You can go ahead and shut me off for a minute, practice it, and come right back to us. Again, keep everything stable. All right, Jesse, let's go ahead. That's the way. And All finish right. up one more arm. Good. And rest. That is the kneeling diagonal arm lift. The next thing we're gonna do now is go what we call the front pillar bridge. When we talk about the pillar, the pillar really is focusing on your shoulders, to your core, right into your hips. And the better we hold that, do you ever think about that while you run? Now that I've uh, talked to you, I absolutely do. I used to think about my arms and my legs and what they were doing, and now I really focus on what's going on right here. Excellent. And the better we focus on this pillar, the more efficient your running becomes. You feel nice and tall when you run. Stay real centered. Here's one of the best exercises. Jessie's going to come out, support her weight right with her forearms. She's going to pull those toes up, and her leg's going to be straight. And we're literally going to do this one without moving. <laughs> Makes it look easier, but it's much tougher. Tummy's pulled up and in, shoulders are pushed away. We're gonna do one to two sets of 15 to 45 seconds. This is the front pillar bridge. Now, Jesse, you feeling that? Yeah. What are I, you focusing on? Focusing on, it's real easy for me to wanna just do this, let my shoulders down, or maybe even drop my hips. So really just lifting up through my shoulders and staying long with my, also my head nice and long. I love it when they're incredibly, incredibly dialed in. Excellent, and rest, Jesse. Now that one may early on feel like you're shaking. The better you get, the more quiet that movement becomes. Mm -hmm. Now let's show them the lateral pillar bridge. Okay. It's one thing to stabilize the front, but every time we run, we say that hip and that torso may want to shift out, and we want to stay nice and centered as we run, so we're very fluid. Jesse's gonna go right on her side. She's gonna make sure to push out of this shoulder and right out of her legs, so she's nice and long, right through her entire torso. She's gonna make sure that this hip is staying up off the ground. And we're again going to hold this for one to two sets of anywhere between 15 and 45 seconds. If this is too difficult, just let's just show them to drop the hip down. And then you can come right back up and again, start at about five repetitions, build up to 10, then go 15 to 45 seconds. Where are you feeling it? Feeling it all right in here. It's easy for me to wanna to feel like I wanna drop it, but I just try to keep pressing up, up, up. I love it, she can talk to this stuff. It makes all the rest of us not look so good. So, all right, that is really where we're gonna focus on this pillar and the rotary stability to help decrease the injury potential or prehab your body for running, as well as improve the efficiency every time you get out there and clear your mind and exercise your heart. This next drill is really gonna focus on our lower body in a pushing action, just like when we run. Now, we've talked about the importance of the glutes. And they're really important for that propulsive strength to help give you more distance per each stride, especially when you're climbing up those big hills. But think about when you're coming down the hill as well, the glutes act as a really good shock absorber and control what happens below, down at your knee and down at your foot. This single leg balance squat is gonna help you get great strength and great power to help improve your running, decrease your injury potential. We're gonna start off with a chair, and Jesse's gonna face away from the chair, She's gonna start off now by lifting up her left leg just slightly with the toe up. Almost looks like a little bit of a running stride. Now Jessie's gonna do is she's gonna use the chair, reaching the arms all the way out, coming down only on this right leg. The knee stays over the toe. She's gonna go down as long as she can hold it. She sits down. Now use both legs to stand right back up. Now we'll switch legs. Jessie's really gonna hold this great posture. Sit the hips back in the chair. You feeling that, Jess? Mm -hmm. Good. Excellent job. Now put both feet down, stand back up. Now we're gonna do this for one to two sets of five to 10 repetitions until we get strong enough to go ahead and go all on one leg. So what I want you to do is when you progress to this, is go ahead and put the chair just in front of you or stand behind the couch. Jesse will do the same exercise here, staying on one leg the whole time. Now the chair is there not to help you, but just in case you need it. Hold the perfect posture, tummy's tight, knee stays over the toe, and make sure that the knee stays out. Jessie's just gonna hold on to that if she needs it, try to get a good angle, then fire through the glute and stand right back up. Now this off leg is just gonna stay barely off the ground. Again, she's gonna sit back, gonna really feel the load in the glute, and then stand back up. Good. Now Jesse, let's go ahead and do a few reps here with just the right leg for about three reps each you'll have and build up to five to 10 reps. 
Now the great thing about video on demand is you can pause us, practice it, or you can go back and rewind and try to work right along with Jesse. That'll work great. I think Jesse would like some VOD so she could fast forward me. Absolutely. Exactly. Or take a break. Or yeah. take a break, one or <laughs> two. I think all our athletes would like that over time. Notice a great posture, really loading the glutes and then firing from the glutes and coming back up. Now our next exercise is gonna then focus up on the shoulders. So Jesse, let's go ahead and face this way. We're gonna do what we call some Y's, T's, W's and L's. When we run a lot, we tend to run and our shoulders start to roll forward. And for everybody at home or at work, we spend a lot of time in front of the computer, mm -hmm. sitting in planes, everything rolls in. Neck forward, shoulders in. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna work on stabilizing that head back and the muscles of your upper back are gonna be worked through this standing Y, T, W and L. We're gonna do one to two sets of five to 10 repetitions and it is gonna be tough. Jesse, let's go ahead and get in good posture. Bend at the waist. The back is gonna bend a little bit more forward so it's a little bit more parallel to the ground. She's gonna think about taking these long levers of her arms, squeezing her shoulder blades back, and then creating a Y over the top. So I look at Jessie here, she's created a Y with her body. Just let's do about two more reps. Again, you're gonna do five to 10 reps, one to two sets. Good. Now the key point you'll see here is that Jessie is sliding her shoulder blades back toward the spine and then elevating the hands. Perfect. So those are the Ys. And because we love the alphabet here at Sports School, we're gonna go to T's next. Jessie's gonna roll the thumbs up, shoulder blades, and then elevate the hands. You should feel it in the upper back and the back of the shoulder. Again, five to 10 repetitions here, and then you'll move right on to our next exercise, which is the W. The W is gonna help really stretch out your chest, as well as strengthen the muscle of this rotator cuff, which is deep inside the muscle. Jesse's then going to go back, good, really rotate back, and then drop down. Now, when you think about the running, we need to help stabilize this upper back so I can hold better posture, but this also plays in great if you like throwing sports or if you like to swim or even into your cycling. Good, you feeling that, Jesse? I feel it, and I'll tell you what, it's not just my shoulders, but I'm also in my back. Exactly. Trying to keep my abs tight, I feel it in my glutes, and I feel all nice stable all through here, so it's one whole big body exercise. Great point. <laughs> now, our last one is gonna be the L's. Jesse's gonna come up, shoulder blades together, arms right out to the side, so you should see an L with the body, and then an L with the forearm, so she's gonna have a couple of 90 degree angles here, rotate the hands back down, and then drop. So three points, shoulder blades, elbows, rotate the hands. Okay, follow the path right back down. Again, last one, Jesse, shoulder blades, elbows, and hands. Jesse, you know, I, I know you have to feel that. I feel it, like I told you, all through my body, <laughs> but great for the shoulders. Excellent, and that's gonna help mm -hmm. protect our rotator cuff, some of the small stabilizing muscles to improve your running mechanics and a lot of the other sports that you enjoy. We're now going to focus our strength on both that oh, kind of propulsive strength mixed with that stabilizing strength of the little muscles all together by using what we call a physio ball. Some people may call it a Swiss ball or a stability ball or a balance ball, but bottom line, you can find them at any sporting goods store or sportschool.com. So Jesse, let's go ahead and put this thing through its paces. Right. Let's start right down on the ground. Go ahead and hop on your back. If you need to use a pad, you can use a pad. We're gonna start off by taking that ball putting it right into your hamstrings and right in to your heels. Jesse's gonna really pull his toes up, dig the heels in hard, just like you're riding a horse. She's gonna keep her arms out to her side for this first exercise, which we call a reverse crunch. One to two sets, five to 10 repetitions, and it's really important that you keep this tummy tight or pulled into the ground the majority of the set. Jesse's gonna start off. We're gonna try to take that ball and rotate the knees right up toward her chest there it is, and then back down. Now this is going to help develop the muscles all in around your core or your torso. Jesse's gonna pull it up again, good. Now notice Jesse's really doing a nice job of concentrating and really controlling it. This is a tough movement. You may feel like your tummy just sticks right out, just a little bit too advanced. Just go ahead and rest, get your rest, and we'll go again. Good, excellent job. Now this is gonna focus on those muscles right to the front of your torso, right into your core. It's also gonna stretch out the low back at the same time. And if your legs slip off, just reset them and keep going, because mine keeps slipping off. It's gonna happen. There you go. It's gonna happen. 
Excellent. And if you're doing this after your run, your legs may be a little bit sweaty, and that's going to happen. Just dry them off, and off we go again. Mm -hmm. It's real world here at the sports school. <laughs> All right, our next one is going to be a great challenge for us. We're going to start off here with an exercise called physio ball bridge to leg curl. One of the best exercises our runners do. Jesse, let's go ahead and start off with taking your heels right up on the ball. And again, we've talked about the importance of glutes, and we know that when we run, that our leg is gonna come back underneath the hip and hit. We wanna be nice and tall, so we're gonna have to use these muscles back here and then lift the leg back up. Now watch this action. Jessie's gonna keep the toes right up toward the shin. She's gonna fire her glutes just like she would be if she was running. And then she's going to keep the hips tall and pull the heels in for this physio ball leg curl. Now on this first one, you may have to take, go ahead and let it back out, good. You may have to go ahead and put this on pause and just try this for a minute. The ball may be moving around. Jessie would start off with her arms out to her side to give you greater balance and stability, and then pull in again. The more advanced you get, the smaller you can bring the arms in. The key point, really push through the heels so that this straight line from your shoulder right through to your knee. Excellent, Jessie. Good, and pull it in again. Fire those glutes. You guys, this is really tough. So again, use the technology to your advantage. Don't get frustrated here. You will get this one down, and the whole thing is focusing on firing the glutes and really keeping them squeezed, and you're really gonna feel those hamstrings with the muscles right back here work. Jesse, great job. Thanks. You feel that one, don't That's you? That's a great one. I love doing that one. It's helped my running a lot. We have people who can be really, really strong and really struggle with this exercise, so give yourself a little bit of time to master it. Okay, our next exercise, we're gonna hop up on the ball now, and we're gonna do what we call a Russian twist. Jessie's gonna go ahead and sit on the ball. She's gonna get her balance. She's gonna let her legs walk out. Good. Her shoulder's gonna stay right in the middle of the ball. Her arms are gonna come straight. We're gonna do what we call a Russian twist. Key point, body's gonna stay flat here. Hips are gonna stay tall the whole time. Her arms are gonna stay together, and she's gonna rotate her shoulders over to the right. Good, now notice that the ball moves and rotates. Now Jessie, her shoulders are vertical here and her hips are flat here, so it's gonna give her a great stretch and great strength. And as she rotates the other side, she's really gonna have to fire this hip to stay tall and then rotate back. Now again, one to two sets, five to 10 reps, and then we can start to add a little bit of weight right in your hands. Good, Jessie, you feeling that? I feel it. It takes a lot for me to just keep these really tight to keep this where it needs to be. It's easy to really rotate, but to keep them straight, it's a good exercise. Excellent. So focus on glutes. The other thing I want to be real careful on, that you don't just move your arms, but you really rotate from the shoulder. One more time on each side. Okay. Again, if you need to use that video on demand technology, hit pause or rewind it to watch this exercise. Look at that ball move under her shoulders. Get everything, still, everything else stays nice and smooth. Excellent. Okay, now we're gonna just roll back and let your body arch right over the ball. The next one is our favorite, physio ball crunch. This has been shown by research to get the most activity right up to the muscles of the front of your body. Jessie will support her head. You notice she's gonna create this great arch over the ball. That will maximally stretch out the abdominal muscles far superior to any crunch you can do on the floor. So then crunch up both from the top half and from the bottom half of her pelvis. Now she's arced up this way, and then she's gonna stretch by arcing all the way back, dropping the hips. Look at the great stretch, and then the great contraction right through here. This is gonna get your abdominals stronger, faster than anything else that you can do. Okay, and that's proven by research. What we're always trying to do here at Sports School in a real easy way. Excellent. So we'll again do this one to two sets of 10 or more repetitions, and you will feel the burn, trust me. <laughs> the last thing we're gonna do is roll right over on the stomach. Good. And Jesse's gonna do what we call lying opposite. When we run, as I start to stride, I'm gonna fire that muscle so my left glute's gonna work with this right shoulder. Again, that X component right across the body. So Jesse's gonna go right through here. She's gonna stabilize her hips on top of the ball. And now as she raises this arm, she's gonna go through and work with this glute. So as you look at this, she's firing across exactly like she runs. Then we'll switch arms, good. This is why it's so important to train for running. Your body goes through these movement patterns. If you can't stabilize and strengthen them, you are not gonna reach your maximum running capacity. Whether you enjoy it just for recreation or you continue to get better on five or 10 Ks or have the goal of running a marathon. Build your body to withstand the demands of running. Good, really focus on firing the glute and ring that shoulder together and then drop back down. 
Good. And then fire this shoulder blade, bring the shoulder and the glute together, just like it's going to happen when you run. Jess, did you feel that? I felt it. Good, and relax. Okay. Good. What did you have to focus on there? There really, it's, it looks simple, but it's a lot of stabilizing right in the center. So I really just thought about being long. It helps when I think about long with the front arm and the back leg that I'm using and uh, just being real, sta real stable in there. Excellent. Mm -hmm. These are the same movement patterns that you're going to have while you run, and that's why training for running is so critical. If you do these drills properly, your training is going to help improve your 5 or your 10K or just improve the quality of you going out and trail running. By improving your core strength through this program, you create a foundation from which to train and run better, and from which you can compete more intensely. When you're healthy and powerful throughout your entire body, you can generate consistent speed like you never thought you could.